Thanks for joining us. We begin TVC News at 10 in Abuja, where President Bola Tinobu moments ago redeployed former Governor of Washington State and Minister Designate Adigbo Yegao Yetola from the Ministry of Transportation to the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy. The President also redeployed another Minister Designate, Abubakar Momo, from the Federal Ministry of Youth to the Federal Ministry of Niger Delta Development. The change was announced in a statement by the presidential spokesman, Ajurin Gelali, who also said the changes take immediate effect. Both ministers of state in the oil and gas sector are now domiciled in the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources with the following designations. Senator Heineken Lokobiri is the Honorable Minister of State Oil, Petroleum Resources, while Honorable Ikberipe Epo is the Honorable Minister of State Gas, Petroleum Resources. The president also approved the renaming of the Federal Ministry of Environment and Ecological Management as a Federal Ministry of Environment. Still in Abuja, where all is now set for the official swearing-in of the ministers designate on Monday, by President Bola Tinobu. This is after the 45 appointees successfully completed their documentation process. The crucial step was finalized at the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation earlier today. In a statement by the Director of Information in the office of the SGF, Willy Bassi, each minister designate also collected three invitation cards for their guests, ensuring their presence at the upcoming ceremony slated for Monday at 10 a.m. For more on the minister's designate and the sworn-in ceremony coming up tomorrow, we have the Chief Executive Connected Development, Hamzat Lawal, join us live via Zoom from Monrovia. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 10. On the eve of the inauguration, we have seen some reshuffling among uh, the minister's designate. What do you make of this? Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm really happy that this reshuffling has happened because I was actually against the Minister of Youth designate uh, because President Bola Ahmed Tinubu had promised young people that they would inform part of his government. And a lot of young people were not happy when he made a 52 or 53 year old person to lead the Ministry of Youth Development. So I'm really happy that he has been redeployed. I know that right now we don't have a minister designate for the Ministry of Youth and Development, but I believe in coming days he'll make the right choice. We need to see someone that is young, someone that is of our care, looks like, you know, that demography that we represent. Over 60 million, uh, over 60 percent rather, of 200 million people uh, inform the population of our dear country. And we know the role young people play in the 2023 general election. So I'm really mm. And what are your expectations as the ministers get ready to be sworn in? Mr. Lawal, if you can hear me, I am asking what your expectations are of this minister's designate as they get ready to be inaugurated on Monday. Well, first, uh, I think that a lot of them has to conduct a needs assessment uh, because they're taking over the helms of affairs of these uh, ministries. And it's important for them to understand what are the gaps, what are the challenges, what are the lessons, and how they can hit the ground running. For, for instance, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, I think it's important for her to look at the social investment program. Has that program achieved purpose? What are the gaps, what are the challenges, and how can we redefine uh, an intervention that ensures inclusion, ensures that financial inclusion, and also meets the targeted audience? For the Minister of Health, Nigeria came out of a pandemic, and the world is now debating how can we ensure that Nigeria is more prepared for future pandemics. So he needs to also look at how can we put in place infrastructure, particularly health infrastructure, what are the kind of partnership that is needed. For the Minister of Foreign Affairs, a very fine, refined diplomat, uh, President Tinubu is expected to make an appearance and a statement at the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, he needs to start preparing what would be Nigeria's role in this meeting various side events, what would inform Mr. President's speech, what kind of meeting and what kind of bilateral engagement is the president going to have in New York? 
how is he going to integrate civil society organization and ensure that there is a holistic approach to how we engage the international community. Also knowing that there is a there's tension with Niger and speaking about that also, you know, there's that tension around the border. How are some of these ministers ensuring that if this would be a fallout into a humanitarian crisis, how do we respond to it? For the Ministry of Education, we're dealing with millions of children out of school. Today, it's over 20 million, you know, informed by data. How is he going to work with stakeholders to ensure that, one, we end early child marriage, two, we create an avenue where children, irrespective of where they find themselves, can get adequate education? And three, how can we ensure that every child, particularly girl child, goes to school and we ensure that this learning environment is a safe space for children? Mm -hmm. This past week, the federal government uh, gave five billionaire palliative to each state and the FCT. Now those ministers are coming into office. How do, would you say they should work with the state governments to ensure these help, these aid, these funds actually get to those who really need them? I think first is to ensure they provide oversight and there is a structural approach where each and every state government must meet a threshold. I know that uh, there's been clamor for civil society, traditional and religious institutions to inform some of the committees that have been set up by the state government. But there should be a coordinated stress, a threshold, uh, an approach that must be adopted. And I think that states need to also start coming up with their own register. I know some states have their register, but we know that there's also some gap in this register. And, and as much as states have a, a register, we must have also a national register that can mirror what the state is doing. I think that this is also a test because Mr. President has now said, you know what, uh, we, he recognized the three tiers of government, local, state, and federal, and there is that independence. So it's giving them resources to ensure that they can meet the targeted low income and poor households. So uh, this is also a call to local and community-based organizations to provide adequate oversight work closely with the government. I'm really excited to also mention that some state governors and their officials have reached out to follow the money. They want us to come and provide oversight to support them technically, but most importantly, ensure that they're able to use this money judiciously. And this is you know, what transparency and accountability is all about, and knowing that if we do this appropriately, we can rebuild back trust in society and support the current administration to ensure that the population that needs this palliative gets them in real time. Chief Executive Connected Development Code, Hamza Lawal, thank you for talking to us on TVC News at 10. Thank you for having me.